Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, okay, we've got the SDG Action Talks now. They are short, they are sharp, they are punchy. They're just 10 minutes each. A little bit like that kind of TEDx style. Somebody gets up here, no chairs, nowhere to hide. They're just going to tell you their story. We've got five over the next uh, hour, basically. And the first one that we got up is looking at education in conflict zones. Myself, I've been a foreign correspondent in a couple of conflict zones. I'll be very interested to hear about education in conflict zones. And we're joined by Dr. Wahid Aryan from the founder of Aryan. Wahid. Shall I stop? Good afternoon, everyone. I'm very proud, humbled, and inspired to be standing in front of you today. My name is Dr. Wahid Aryan. I'm an emergency medicine doctor in the UK and founder of Aryan Tele Hill International Telemedicine Organization. Before I talk how organization contributes to the UN Global Goals, I'd like to highlight the origins of my personal dreams which have led me to founding this organization. I believe the basic foundations of all the UN Global Goals rely on personal dreams. Okay. I was born in Kabul, Afghanistan in 1983 during the Afghan-Soviet conflict. And that picture shows one of the happiest days of the five years of my life, consuming an ice cream in a park, because the rest of the time we spent in cellars hiding from the daily rockets, the bombs, and the shellings. When we were f I was five, my parents decided to take us to Pakistan to migrate, to be in safety. And because the normal routes were closed, we had to take a very dangerous route through valleys, mountains, and rivers, taking up to seven nights and seven days, until we landed in a refugee camp in Pakistan. The journey was dangerous. We were, came under the attack three times, but miraculously survived that. Back in the refugee camp, as a family of 10, we were living in a muddy room with few pillows, little food, no clean water, temperatures rising up to 45 degrees and one fan. Within days, I contracted malaria along with my family members, and then within months, I contracted tuberculosis. As you may already know, it's a horrible disease that turned me almost into a skeleton. The refugee doctor who was in the camp started treating me. And that's when I became inspired to become a doctor so that I could help people like myself and also people who were suffering more than I was. We went back to Kabul, Afghanistan in 1991. And then within a year, the bloody civil war started. It was a street-by-street -street fight amongst various groups because of which we had to move to various parts of the country and stay in cellars most of the time so that we can hide from the daily rockets, the bombs, and the shellings. And it's in those cellars where I self-studied. My parents then finally decided that it was never safe and I had no future, and they started thinking about sending me away. The Taliban took over in 1996. The war intensified even more, and the economy crumbled to the extent that my father was driving a taxi for six months just to be able to afford a sack of rice. They finally sent me away, age 15, on my own to the UK. I landed in London with $100 in my pocket, no family support, no formal education, but I carried on with my dreams, the personal dream that one day I would become a doctor so I could help back. And 
with those dreams, I had a steel-like determination that I would succeed no matter what. So I continued working during the day and studied at night in various colleges. And I achieved five A's, which enabled me to get into Cambridge University in 2003. Graduated from Cambridge University in 2006, went on to Imperial College in London, and also got an elective from Harvard University, and finally became a doctor in 2010. And that's when I went back to my personal dreams, how to be able to help back. So I started making more frequent visits to Kabul, Afghanistan, in order to help in any way I could, whether on the wars with doctors or whether giving a lecture. But I couldn't find other people to come with me because of the security. So that made me think how I could connect the broken healthcare system in war zones to the advanced healthcare system in developed countries. And I kept talking about it, kept researching it, until I came across telemedicine concept. I modified it and founded Ariane Tally Heal International Organization. With the help of the government of Afghanistan, led by His Excellency President Ashraf Ghani, we were allowed to pilot with five hospitals. And then from there, the success of that led us to being connected to all the emergency departments in Afghanistan. Of course, with the support of the Ministry of Public Health in Afghanistan. Now we have more than 100 volunteers who are giving advice from all across the globe using social media on their smartphones to medics in Afghanistan as well as in Syria. We cover all specialties and the response time is less than four hours in acute situations. Of course, there are many challenges along the way which are political, economical, time zone, language. However, with determination, we tackle every one of those challenges with collaboration, with teamwork. And the end result is very simple. There is a doctor, one of our kind volunteers, advising a doctor in Kabul, Afghanistan, from the UK on a smartphone doing a video call. Afghanistan has an undisputed beauty, but unfortunately, because of the decades of war, there are gaps in the economy, infrastructure, capacity, and resources. Although the current government, coalition government, led by His Excellency President Ashraf Ghani, has been doing its best to redevelop and transform the country in every aspect. And it's these new emergency departments to which we are connected to. And these are some of the examples of the hospitals in Afghanistan and of our work. And we are also connected to Syria. We help northern Aleppo. We're connected to doctors over there and we give them advice, but I wouldn't go into too much detail for that. I'd like to emphasize that the foundation of work relies on collaboration, support, and innovation. And these are the key ingredients for every single UN Global Goal. And we continue to innovate. We look into the future by looking at the problems, what might be. And we're the first in the world to perform the live international telemedicine using Microsoft HoloLens, giving advice from the UK back in Afghanistan. And we've also been grateful for some of the achievements along the awards lines, which we have used as platform to scale up our work by achieving the national award in Afghanistan, as well as the national award in the UK, and also the UNESCO Global Hope Award, which were given to us last year. And to confirm, my commitment to the UN Global Goals, I attended the Goalkeepers event hosted by Bell and Melinda Gates Foundation. And I was lucky to share the stage with Barack Obama, Bill and Melinda Gates, and other world leaders, informing them of what we do and how we can work together. And I'd like to conclude 
by highlighting personal dreams, which inspire me on a daily basis. I keep looking at these two pictures. That's a little girl who I met in a refugee camp in Afghanistan. And when I looked into her eyes, my own personal childhood flashed in front of me. If I could rise from a situation where she is and where I was to come and stand in front of you, what could she do? What could millions of children, men and women do if we help them rise? What could all of us do if we joined together hand in hand towards the UN Global Goals? Thank you.